Empire, a title which holds so much power and significance for a nation, a title which was held by many nations throughout history, and most of the time, these nations like to look back at the times when they had their own empire with a sense of nostalgia. But this is not the case for one nation in particular, and that would be Germany. Everyone knows about the German Empire before and after the First World War under the House of Hohenzollern. This was considered a golden age for the German nation, where they were both an industrial and military powerhouse and were considered as a great power. Of course, anyone would guess that this time would be pretty nostalgic for the average German, but strangely enough, this period is not exactly popular among the German people. In fact, it is even outright demonized by both the Republicans and the left. This would obviously not be too special. Republicans and leftists would almost always oppose a form of monarchy, but in Germany in particular, it is a lot more demonized than in your average nation. In fact, it's even controversial to even state that you support the German Empire, leaving not too much room for opposing arguments. Even the leading German conservative party, the CDU, does not look at the times of the German Empire as something to behold. Instead, they openly distance themselves from this time and look more towards the post-war democratic Germany under Konrad Adenauer. Discredited and opposed by both conservatives and leftists, anyone who has shown to be in favor of the empire and waves the flag of the empire would be considered a far-right extremist and undemocratic. But the question is, why? Why is the German Empire looked down upon so much by both sides of the political spectrum in Germany? Was the time really as bad as everyone claimed to be? Or is there something more to this hatred that has nothing to do with that actual period? The answer to this question will be discussed in this video, to show how unfairly the German Empire is treated in modern day Germany and why German monarchists need to take a bigger stand against these views. The 1950s and 1960s saw an economic boom happen across the Western world, especially on the European continent. Many European nations started rapidly improving the living conditions of their citizens and expanding their welfare system. Among these improved standards of living was also the expansion of the education system. Previously, only a few people had access to a high standard of education. The majority of the people who could even afford it were either nobility or bourgeoisie. In the mid 20th century, that all changed however, with more and more people being able to study at colleges and universities regardless of your social class. This also meant that all these new students would also get exposed to new ideas at the campus, and among these ideas was also socialism and communism. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, the idea of communism and socialism was growing quite fond among the student population of both North America and Western Europe during the Cold War. And this fondness for these new ideas eventually led to the widespread 1968 protests. These protests happened across Europe and North America, with the vast majority of these protesters being students from various universities. The general widely accepted goal of these protests was the attempt at a social revolution in various countries, the acceptance of communism and socialism, and a strong sentiment against authoritarianism and conservatism. While this may seem as a general pro-communist protest, which was not unusual for that time, the 1968 protests also attracted another group of people, and those being feminists, liberals, and environmentalists. When it comes to the protests in Europe, they were a lot more about secularization, gender equality, and pacifism rather than actual workers' rights and the implementation of the communist system. In Germany in particular, the movement evolved more around sexual liberation, anti-racism, and general anti-conservative views. Among these views, of course, 
was also the sentiment against the German Empire and monarchism in general. Around this time, the German Empire was seen as very authoritarian, conservative and Christian, which was something the protesters would denounce at all costs. Another factor that contributed to the hatred of the German Empire was the strong suppression of German nationalism from both internal and external sources. After the fall of the Nazi regime and seeing all the atrocities committed under it, the Allied powers tried their best to suppress any sort of German nationalism in Western Germany, and the government of West Germany also tried their best to suppress it as well. German monarchism was also seen as a branch of German nationalism, and as I said previously, it needed to be suppressed at all costs. To add the 1968 protests into the mix, it was clear that the late 20th century was not a very popular time for German monarchism, being under pressure from the leftists as well as the so-called conservatives, just like in the modern day. But nothing as of now seems really controversial. It's just a classic right-wing versus left-wing struggle we are all familiar with. What is so controversial about it? Well, my friends, we are finally going to get into the real reason why German monarchism is looked down so much. With the establishment of the Federal Republic of Germany, the Allied powers wanted to make sure that the Nazi ideology never returned to Germany. As a result, Germany started implementing numerous denazification laws to rid itself of this ideology. One of the things the denazification included was a ban on all forms of Nazi symbolism. Keep in mind, even with these new laws, the far right was still active across Germany, as well as sympathizers of the Nazi regime and they found themselves in a very tough situation because they could not use their symbolism. Even after the formation of the new federal republic, neo-Nazi organizations and parties started popping up, like the Socialist Reich Party founded in 1949 and the Action Front of National Socialists founded in 1977. But all of these small pockets of neo-Nazism were eventually wiped out, with the German government banning them as well as their new symbols. Their attempt at trying to find a loophole in German law failed, with every new symbol they created being banned by the German federal government. But what if there was another possibility? Instead of creating new symbols, what if they started using other symbols which are not part of their ideology and have a very different meaning behind them already established. And this is exactly where the controversy originates from. The far right in Germany lashed itself onto the symbolism of the German Empire, and thus turning the symbols from a time of German glory and power to a symbol of hatred and Nazism. And the left in Germany saw this as the perfect opportunity to finally drive their monarchist enemies into the ground by also claiming it to be a fascist and Nazi symbol. The far right and neo-Nazis are now using symbols of the German Empire to represent their movement, and the left also jumped in on this bandwagon, also supporting this Nazification of the Empire. This left German monarchists in an extremely difficult situation. Now that their symbols started getting misused, there was no real way for them to speak up without getting called Nazis and fascists. This has even started entering into German politics as well. In 2020, the city of Bremen officially banned the use of the German imperial flags, due to them now being heavily associated with the far right. Even the German education system started getting in on the action. A few schools in Germany even started comparing the last German Emperor Wilhelm II to Adolf Hitler. This hatred for the German Empire has absolutely nothing to do with the actual period. Rather, the source of this hatred is mostly coming from the modern-day interpretation of it, through far-right groups using its symbolism and thus making the German Empire associated with Nazi Germany, which is more than ridiculous. It is very clear that German monarchism has come under serious threat, thanks to both efforts by the far right and the left. So, what should be done about it? 
My message to German monarchists worldwide is simple. Do not let your symbols and legacy be seen as something else. You are faced with an extremely difficult time, which I understand. But if you refuse to speak up and fight for what is rightfully yours, the legacy of the Kaiserreich is going to be seen as nothing more than a second Nazi Germany, and only through your silence will this goal of your enemies be achieved. So go out there, wave your flag with pride, and make sure that the entire world knows to which group the flag really belongs to, and shun anyone who dares use it for something else. Speak up against the far right as well as the far left, because both groups are bound to drive German monarchism into the grave and leave a dirty stain on its legacy that can never be cleaned off. Fight against these misconceptions wherever possible and educate the people on the true legacy of the German Empire, not the kind the left wants the people to see. Make sure to stand your ground and never give in, because only then can the glory of the German Empire truly last for eternity.